All right, Advanced Path 8, here we go. We've got multiplying and dividing radicals. All right, so we're going to use some of our simplifying and then add into it the new uh, operations of multiplying and dividing. So when we multiply radicals, one thing to keep in mind is your coefficients, your numbers out front. Coefficients can multiply with other coefficients. So A times C, those two can multiply with each other. On top of that, radicals can multiply with other radicals. So B times D, that goes in there. So those are our basic rules that we're going to follow for this one. Coefficients multiply with coefficients. Radicals multiply with radicals. You can't mix and match. Okay, so for this one, my coefficients are 2 and 5. So 2 times 5 is 10. My radicals are 3 and 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So 2 root 3 times 5 root 2 is 10 root 6. Root 6 doesn't reduce because that's just 3 times 2. There's no pairs inside of there. So there we go. Next one. On this one, the coefficients are 6 and 1. So I multiply 6 and 1. Now 12 and 33, I already can kind of see that there's going to be pairs in here just because of the factors of 12 and 3. And instead of multiplying by 12 times 33 and having to do that whole multiplication, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to write these as 12 times 33. Because if I were to multiply them, my first step when I'm breaking down the factor tree would probably be to split it into 12 and 33. So I multiply that and then just turn around and unmultiply it again. So I'm not going to do that. But I do notice between 12 and 33 that they both have a factor of 3 in it. So I'm definitely going to write that in. And then this is 4 over here. And then 4 is 2 times 2. So my prime factors of 12 times 33 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 11. So i got a pair of 2s, a pair of 3s, and an 11 is going to be left inside. So for this problem, we've got 6 that was already outside of the radical. I'm going to pull out that pair of 2s. I'm going to pull out this pair of 3s. And I'd be left with 11 inside the radical. So my final answer, 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 3 is 36. My final answer would be 36 root 11. All right, next one. Negative 3 times 2, those are the coefficients. I get negative 6. And then 30 times 70, I'm not going to turn it into, what is that, 2,100. I'm just going to leave that as 30 times 70 because I can tell that they both have a factor of 10 in there. So I'm going to split this one up into 3 and 10. I'm going to split this one up into 10 and 7. I got a pair of tens. I don't need to break those down into twos and fives because then I'd have a pair of twos and a pair of fives, which is still 10. So I'm just going to stop there having a pair of tens. I've got a three and a seven left over. So there was a negative six outside. I'm going to take out the power of the pair of 10. And then inside the radical, I've got three times seven left over. So my final answer is negative 60 root 21. Everything's reduced. So your radicals have to be reduced just like we were doing on that last lesson. All right, squaring radicals. Now, squaring and radicals, we said in this first lesson in this kind of mini unit that we're doing here, squaring and square rooting are opposite operations. So if you square a square root, they cancel each other out. And your answer would just be 37. Because squaring undoes square rooting. They're opposite operations. Now over here on this next one, 3 root 5 squared means 3 root 5 times 3 root 5. Now this would give me 3 times 3 is 9. Root 5 times root 5 is root 25. And root 25 is 5. <laughs> so this is 9 times 5, which is 45. But we can see here that there's a pattern to what's going on here. The coefficient got squared, 3 times 3, that's where the 9 came from. And then squaring a radical, like we said up here, it cancels it out. So squaring root 5 by itself is just 5. So what we could have done instead is just go, okay, 3 squared is 9, root 5 squared is 5, 9 times 5 is 45. 
Let's do that on this next one. Negative 10 squared. Negative 10 times negative 10, that's positive 100. Root 7 squared. Root 7 times root 7. Remember, squaring takes away the radical because they're opposite operations. So we'd have 100 times 7, which is 700. All right, dividing radicals. This is the one that gets a little bit tricky. There's no one way to do it. As long as you use your rules of math correctly, you can pretty much do whatever you want. But I'll show you some tips and tricks to uh, help you out with these. Okay, so the first thing that we have to know when we're dividing radicals is that radicals can reduce with other radicals. Just like up here, radicals could multiply with other radicals. Radicals, when you're dividing, they can reduce other radicals. <clears throat> the other thing to keep in mind is if you have the radical of a fraction, you can split that up into two separate radicals, or vice versa. You can take two separate radicals and turn them into just one radical. Lastly, final answers that you give cannot have a radical in the denominator. I think this goes way back to like our grandparents. Well, my grandparents, probably like your great-great-grandparents or something. So my grandparents, they did math on what's called a slide ruler uh, before calculators. So on these slide rulers, it was really difficult to divide by an irrational number. I think personally, they made up this rule that says you can't divide by radicals or you can't have radicals in the denominator because of that. With our calculators today, of course we can. Our calculators are powerful. They can divide by irrational numbers. But for some reason, we still hold on to this rule. So there you go. Blame your great-grandparents. So there's a rule where we can't have a radical in the denominator of our final answer. So those are our three rules to keep, keep track of in our heads. All right, so here we go. First of all, what you want to do is, if you've got a problem, it's breaking the last rule. We've got a radical in the denominator. Some of you might think, well, can I reduce the 15 and the 100? No, because radicals only reduce with other radicals. Radicals don't reduce with these coefficients here. So what I would do first is see if I can reduce my radicals. So in this case, I do know that the square root of 100 is 10. So this would be 15 over 10, and then 5 goes into both of those, so I would reduce this to 3 halves. Pretty simple once I reduced my radical. This one is kind of with that second rule, is rad or first rule. The radicals can reduce with other radicals. So when I have two radicals here, the first thing I usually do is I check to see if they have a, uh, a common factor inside of them. And yes, they do. Seven goes into both of these. So if I reduce this, seven goes into 35 five times, and seven goes into 28 four times. And so what I have here is uh, a problem similar to the previous one. Now, 5 and 4 don't reduce anymore, but the square root of 4 is 2. That problem is done. There's another way that you can write this answer, since there is a mysterious 1 out front there that doesn't exist, but it exists. You could rewrite this as 1 half of root 5. So you can write it as root 5 over 2 or half of root 5. All right, next one. For this one, <clears throat> I'm going to use that first rule that radicals can reduce with other radicals. So this becomes a 1 and this becomes a 9. So I get root 9 over 4. I'm not done because I can reduce the square root of 9 to be 3. So I get 3 fourths as my answer. This became root 1, which is just 1, and 1 times 4 is still 4. All right, what happens when there are problems where you can't just easily get rid of the radicals out of the denominator? So this one, I can't reduce the 3 and the 6 because the 3 is not a radical. So I'm stuck here with a radical in the denominator, which I don't like. But what I can do is rationalize the denominator. Rationalizing, rationalizing the denominator is just multiplying by 1, but in a tricky way. So if I take this and multiply it by root 6 over root 6. Now root 6 over root 6 is 1, 
And we're always allowed to multiply something by one because the multipl multiplicative identity says if you multiply by one, it's still the same number. So I'm multiplying by one here, but in a tricky way. So root six divided by root six, that's one. So if I multiply going straight across, I get three root six. And then root six times root six, that's like root six squared, right? So that would just become six. Now, these cannot reduce because radicals don't reduce with radicals, but whole numbers can reduce with whole numbers. So three goes into three once, three goes into six twice. So we get root six over two or one half of root six. All right, next one. I can't reduce the 15 and the 5 because one's a radical and one's a coefficient over there. And 2 and 5 don't reduce. So I'm stuck with a radical in the denominator breaking rule number 3. So I'm going to multiply by 1. I'm going to multiply by root 5 over root 5. So 15 root 2 times root 5. Remember, radicals multiply with radicals. So this would give me 15 root 10. Root 5 times root 5 is just 5, because that's root 5 squared, and the squaring takes away the square root. I'm not done here, because the 5 and the 15 are both coefficients that I can reduce. 5 goes into 5 once, goes into 15 three times, and I end up with 3 square root of 10. All right, next one. This one can be approached a lot of different ways. <clears throat> we can't reduce the 6 and the 18 because they're not both radicals. But I could, if I wanted to, uh, simplify root 18, because I do know that that's 9 times 2, and 9 is 3 times 3. Pair of 3 is 2 left over. So my first step, I could do 6 over 3 root 2. And then I notice here that the 3 and the 6 reduce, and I get 2 over root 2. I am still stuck at this point. I'm going to need to rationalize the denominator so I can multiply the top by root 2 and the bottom by root 2. So I'm multiplying by 1, the multiplicative identity. So I get 2 root 2 over 2, and the 2s reduce each other, and I get root 2 as my answer. So that's one way I could do it by simplifying the uh, radical in the denominator first. I could have also just done this. 6 over root 18, I can just multiply by root 18 on both sides, or on the, in the numerator and the denominator. So this gives me 6 root 18 over 18. These do reduce. This gives me 1 over 3. So I get root 18 over 3. And we said earlier that root 18 is 3 root 2. So this would be 3 root 2 over 3, and then the 3s reduce, and I get root 2. So same answer, just different pathway to getting there. All right, last one. So this one, I've got 3 root 2. You've got a couple options. You can multiply the top and the bottom by 3 root 2. But to get rid of the radical, all we need, really need to do is multiply by root 2. Like I said before, you can multiply by 3 root 2, but you don't have to. All you need is 3 root 2. So remember, root 2 times root 2 is 2, and this is 3 times 2, so that would be 6 in the denominator and 5 root 2 in the numerator. And that's as far as we can go. Nothing reduces here. We can't reduce the 2 and the 6. So this would be 5 root 2 over 6, or you can write that as 5 sixths of root 2. Now, let's see what would have happened if you would have multiplied the numerator and the denominator by 3 root 2. All right, so what if we would have multiplied by 3 root 2 instead of root 2? All right, spoiler alert, we get the same answer. Anyways, moving on. So this would give us 15 root 2. 3 root 2 times 3 root 2, so this is 9 times... So 3 times 3 is 9, root 2 times root 2 is 2, so this becomes 18. And then 15 and 18 reduce, 3 goes into both of them. So 3 goes into this 5 times, it goes into this 6 times, and I get the same exact answer. 
5 root 2 over 6. So yes, you could have multiplied by 3 root 2. You didn't really need to. Just multiply by the radical. And that will go ahead and rationalize your denominator and get your radicals out of the denominator. All right, that's all I got for you today. Math hard. See you later. Bye-bye.